What is up, ChuckleFox, and welcome back to the final episode of Wrench's Way 2. This episode, we are going to be focusing on the finishing touches and details for this light cruiser and get it ready for some combat. We are going to be watching an amazing transformation from having this bland old light cruiser going from looking like this to looking like this. Without further ado, let's get right to work. First, what we're going to do is that we are going to sure up and finish the front superstructure. We are going to get all of its details taken care of before we move on to the rear superstructure and everything in between in front of it. One of the first steps is getting your windows and portholes taken care of. So as you can see with here in the main cab, down here, and up on top of the mast there, we have our windows in place as in the reference model. And if you forgot what the reference model looks like, don't worry, I got you covered. Links in the description down below. Next in the detailing is we need to get some more of our detection in place. So this is a certain prefab design that I have made previously of just a small little radar dish that we can place around. As you can see, we have it there and we also have it up there. Those are small little radar dishes that are great for filling up certain areas that you would think detection would go in. Now, these for granted are not actually detection, they're entirely mimics just for the purpose of filling in the space. And for reference, these little windows here, those are the new interface screens from Cram. They are fantastic for little windows and portholes such as that. And the portholes that I use right down here are steam pipes. They are just pulled backwards and colored the same as the rest of the hole. Of course, we can't forget all the railing that we have already actually put on in the previous video. Next, as you can see in our reference image here, we can see that we need to add some of these different little masts and arms that are coming out from that superstructure for more masting and rigging to be able to be mounted to. So, we are going to decorate that in. Next, let's stick a little bit of detail on that smokestack, because that smokestack is quite bland. And now, we've got our different details onto here. For the smokestacks, normally I like to add a little bit of venting using the battery banks which create that nice mesh texture that is a kind of a protector layer to the exhaust bits. And then we've also got these different steam pipes that are coming up from the actual base of the ship and up the side of the smokestack as some smokestacks actually are. These are of course just metal pipes not actually steam tanks. Now up here, normally whenever it comes to smokestacks, I like to use the turbines, and I would normally make them spin, but these are entirely mimicked, and I have hidden the actual slopes to come down here, so we will go ahead and kind of... Okay, so we're going to come here, like I was trying to do, and check this out. So, as you can see, I just hid the 4 meter slope that runs along here, and just slimmed it out a little bit so we have a little bit of thinner walls on here and we can see more of the smokestack and then of course i put smoke generators underneath both of those and then we have our little masts here for a little antennas and also another spot for rigging to be able to hooked up to if we need it next step now we need to add a little bit of what's called greeble what is greeble you might ask i'm glad you asked Greeble, as a common term used within the FTD community, are random objects that you place around the ship in order to fill up the area and make it look more detailed without actually serving any practical purpose. Some of these are material containers, ammo boxes, spotlights, steam vents on the or rope tie downs on the deck, life vests. These can also be expanded to other bigger items such as little machine gun nests for AA and also different kinds of venting, such as big vent tubes or venting blocks, also commonly used on more Russian ships if you look in the World War II to Cold War era. And there's plenty more different details than that, but these are easy ones that you can make and have prefab, such as I do here. And with that being said, let's get some greeble on this superstructure. And just like that, now we have a little bit of greeble all over this superstructure. As you can see, we have a few of the different spotlights around. We also have some of those life vests stuck around the decks. And we also have a little bit of the few uh, ammo and material containers that are placed up here and the venting blocks around here. 
So, this superstructure is most certainly coming along. Now that we got a lot of the sides of the superstructure taken care of, we need to worry about the front. Because the front of this ship is holy hell, it's fucking bland. We gotta put some anchors and some railings on. Bingo bango bongo, we got ourselves a good front end. We got ourselves all the different greeble all across the deck, as well as our anchors. I normally like to use the big anchors and the big chains wrapping around. So I'll actually use the physical chains going straight back. But then, of course, we have to decorate them as they go around a corner there and coming into the actual deck. Now, for this, I use the new cram barrel texture as the hollow portion to be able to make the chain go inside of it and down into the deck. And, of course, we got our little steam vent tanks or whatever you fuck you want to call them, our ammo boxes. And you'll see some ships that have this, like, little shield. Honest to God, I'm not a naval historian or expert on naval stuff, so I have no idea what the fuck it's called. But I see other ships use it, so I put it on. And then another form of greeble that we can also do is stuff like this. Just random items across the deck. Next, let's add a little bit of the portholes that are going to be sitting on the sides of the ship themselves. And as I stated earlier, portholes, I normally use the steam pipes. Boom shakalaka, there's our steam pipes. And as you can see, the front end of this whole ship is really starting to piece itself together. But now we've babied the front of the ship a little bit much. We need to worry about the rear ear. The rear is looking a little bit bland. Let's get to it, brother. First off, for this section, let's get all of our different greeble and all the details that we are going to put on not only this rear mast, but also down here behind the torpedoes and to the sides of them. There we are. There is the middle of the deck. As you can see, we use more of our venting blocks. Some of these lifeboats that are pretty much almost entirely made out of alloy poles. Then we've got our life vests and we got little, little holders with ropes coming down to hang on to some of those life vests. And we also see that we accidentally fucked up and put the railing through the actual, uh, the, the actual rail, uh, the life vest. Not life vest, goddamn. Lifeboat. I'm retarded. We will fix that here in a moment, but that's pretty easy to fix. Of course, we got more of our venting blocks, and then we've also got some more of the greeble running around the rest of the ship. Now, when it comes to our mast, as you can see, we added another supporting beam coming down off of the mast. And then we put another one of our spotlights, put some railings, and continue to make the mast upwards like this. It is quite easy to get a good mast going, especially once you have a good reference image, so you can see a lot of the similarities between this mast and our mast. Now, let's doll up our little rear smokestack real quick. And now that rear smokestack is looking good. We did basically the same technique as we did on the front one, add a little bit of a smoke pipe coming up from the side of the smokestack, adding our vents once again, some more of the venting tubes, and a small platform to put a spotlight. Of course, using the exact same upper design here, using the medium steam turbines, and then using a combination of the uh, straight pipes from fuel engines and metal poles to create these different masts. And then we, of course, have now started using rigging. When it comes to making rigging for your ship, normally I only use one singular texture or one singular block to make the rigging, which is the exhaust straight pipe from the fuel engines. Those I just color either a dark gray or a black and then stretch them around, rotate them, and do whatever the hell I need to do in order to get them where I want them. It is a very tedious process, especially considering the fact that most of the time, these kinds of masts are completely mimicked. They do not exist. They're not real. Now, as we can come back here, we can go ahead and take a look at some of the other detailings that we did. We added more of our venting blocks and, of course, more of the greeble, different spotlights, and all that jazz. Of course, more of the ammo boxes, material boxes, and we also rounded out the turret necks for our Sea Whiz guns here. Now, let's give the rear of this ship a little bit of extra love. And the back end got a little bit of love. <laughs> yeah. So, we of course did more of our exact same technique. It's rinse and repeat. Copy and paste a lot of your different decorations such as that. Of course, your different material boxes and your ammo boxes. Of course, we got more life rafts that are going to be sitting around here. More of the venting blocks and such. And we put a little break in the railing here for whatever the hell you want to put back here. For right now, I'm perfectly fine with it being open. Now, as we're already back here, we pretty much got the superstructure taken care of. 
We kind of need a little bit of propulsion, brother. Otherwise, we ain't going to go very fucking far. Now, the rear end has got a little bit of propulsion. Now, do not forget, we also needed to put that second layer of belly armor down here, which I have went ahead and gone and done, which is just another layer of alloy instead of metal. Have a little bit of detection down here at the bottom for our anti-submarine defense, and we went ahead and added another torpedo launcher that is going to be located right up here. Now, you may notice, wait a second, wrench. Those don't look like torpedoes. Oh, sure they do. We are going to be utilizing the new decorations on missiles. Now, if you want a tutorial on that, I am not entirely uh, great at them. But what, what, I, what I will do is that I will link in the description below the tutorial I use to actually figure out how to do the missile, the missile decorations. I will link him in the description below because he did a great job. And I want to want to support him in that way because he helped me out. So... Now, of course, we have now finished up our rigging all across, just across the random mass, and we wanted to add a little bit coming through here, just so this area isn't so open and bland. And we added a little bit of these life rafts as well to the sides, and added our portholes here on the sides as well. And the ship is pretty well close to completion. The decoration part of the ship is now complete. We are ready to go on that front, but we still have fine tuning we've got to do. We not only have to set our turret restrictions so the turrets don't try to turn 360 and hit the superstructure and get stuck. We also need to set our firing ranges. We also need to set our sea whiz controllers, which I'll show you the settings that I use. For those who may be new to the game and don't know how to set fire restrictions nor actually find your turret base very quickly, here are a few tips for you. Once you go into build mode, you can hit shift P, and you'll see these different views pop up. Keep on pressing P until you get to this view here, and then you could do a cutaway or a uh, full like metal alloy and basic materials cutaway, so you could see everything in your ship. So you could easily come down here to your turret base. Now, when you're on your turret base and you want to set turret constraints, press Q on it. Extra turret constraints. You'll press this button right up here, the enable extra constraints on the field of fire, and then you will be able to adjust it from here. Now, you can see right here, the green arrows. We're gonna go ahead and make that marker size to max so we can see. So what this is going to allow you to do is set where it can and cannot aim. So in this case, where that arrow is pointing is where it can aim. So we want it to aim no more than, let's say, 135 degrees. And we will do the same over here. There we go. Now it will not aim in this area through here. Once we've done that, we don't have to do that one again. We could copy and paste it right to here. And then we could start doing the same thing for our rear guns and also our side Sea Whiz guns. As you can see here, we already have those set. And this one back here, we do not. So we will go ahead and paste. Now, if you have the measurements back here and you're like, well, those look good, but the arrows are pointing the wrong way, you could easily hit this little button over here, flip azimuth constraints, and it'll do that right for you. So we're going to go ahead and hit about 50 degrees that way. And 50 degrees that way. Now that turret constraint is ready to go. Now let's go double check our torpedo launchers and make sure that those are going to be doing okay and are not going to try and turn into the ship. That is correct. They will not. Now, these are the torpedoes I also made. These are just entirely silver and I, unfortunately I cannot get the propellers to spin, but I have referenced them off of real life torpedoes and they look pretty cool. Now, of course, way down in here, we need to come to our AI. We also have our ship stabilization stuff such as the PIDs I normally use pitch and roll PIDs general purpose PIDs for those who are unaware are certain kind of P PIDs that are able to control different aspects of your ship so in this case I have them controlling propellers because I want them to control how much the ship is able to sway back and forth and rock front to back so in this case I have this one set to roll so I want it to control roll and the outputs, I want it to be 
controlling the propellers that are set to propulsion roll. And then you want to enable your fake set point. The enabling the fake set point is setting how much you want your ship to stay centered. Zero is like you want it to stay straight up and down, nothing left or right. Now, if we were to increase it some, then the ship would try to start tilting to the right or the left and maintain a certain degree. So in this case, we want to keep that at a good old, not 20, but zero. Now, whenever you're creating your roll stabilization and other pitch and roll propellers, whenever you set them down, you want the roll propellers to be on the outer edges of your ship so they have more leverage to be able to keep it stabilized. And you want to hit the roller preset and then it'll automatically adjust for roll. Now, the beauty about general purpose PIDs, instead of using the PIDs that are inside the AI itself, is that whenever you turn off the vehicle, so in this case, let's just go to, well, if I didn't fat finger everything, press C, and you disable movement. That disables your entire AI. That means that if you use the AI PIDs, then so would the stabilization. Your ship would automatically lose all of its stability. That's not good. General purpose, do not turn off whenever you turn off the AI. They will continue to keep the ship stable. It's just its forward and backward movement is disabled from the AI. That's why I use general purpose. Other people don't like to do that. That's what I personally like to do because I like my ship to stay level at all times, especially while I am controlling the ship. I don't want it rocking back and forth. Now, on to our SeaWiz controllers. For the SeaWiz, I have my SeaWiz set to where it is meant to target multiple diff. Uh, it's meant to look at what other turrets are. God damn it. We want to make it to where no more than one gun is pointing at the exact same target at the same time and only engage ones that are closer up and focus more on them. So, we're going to go ahead and if I can find the come on there you are so now i cannot explain a lot of this because i'm not too terribly uh knowledgeable on the subject of of ciws and uh yeah ciws systems and the controllers for that so i'm gonna go ahead there's my screen. That's what I use on all of my ships for any of the SeaWiz purposes. If you want to copy it, it works very well. Here you go. Pause the video for a second. Now, moving on from that. And now that we've got all the refining and all of the details done, we are finally ready to let this thing set down in the water, set sail, and start hitting the seas against the enemies. All right, chuckle fucks. And on that note, I want to thank you all so very much for watching. And for a lot of you for watching the entire series, this whole new tutorial series has brought in a lot of new faces to my channel. So I want to thank you all for the support. Also, thank you for us hitting a thousand subscribers now. So stay tuned for more content. I plan on doing our APS tutorials since I've had an absurd amount of people ask for an APS tutorial on the first video of the series. So that is coming. That is going to be in the works, but that is going to be a pain in the ass to make. 
So please do be patient with me. And on that note, I'll see you chuckle fucks in the next video. Thanks. But hold on. Did you really think I forgot? I asked you all what we should name this ship in the second episode, the whole construction episode. And there were a lot of good names, but I have made my decision. That is going to be calling it the Squire class cruiser. Now, the unfortunate part is I went to go back and look at the guy's name to give him credit, but I don't see his fucking comment anywhere. I remember vividly seeing it, and his reasoning was because... It's the vehicle that I'm showing you all how to build. You all are my squires. I am the teacher in this case. So I thought it fit well. But I can't find this fucking common anywhere. So uh, I'm sorry if you uh, if you know who you are. But regardless, it's going to be the Squire Class Cruiser. Thank you.